Hi, this is Shadow Child. Welcome to beautiful Cambridge. And today I'm going to be showing you how I made my track Mars. So basically, just to explain the story, I kind of, when I, when I was kind of oh, 15, 16, heavily into the whole rave thing, 92, uh, you know, the pre-jungle sound, that 92 kind of hardcore era um, and stuff, and was very taken with jungle and drum and bass after that. Um, whilst that was all going on, you also had some incredible music coming out of Europe and the UK as well. Uh, but on labels at Europe like RNS, Heart House, um, and the UK also like Huge Tunes, uh, Leftfield's label, Hard Hands, Gorilla. So it was kind of a melodic techno sound, um, pre trance, really. I mean, trance as you think of it now with very Corsten and Tiesto. This isn't quite what it what it is, but that this sound laid the building blocks for that to happen in the 90s, late 90s. So, but early 90s, it was more of a melodic techno. So I did like that music. I didn't know a lot about it, but I fi found myself uh, about August 2019 uh, buying some equipment, which was for um, a film shoot, actually, for another project I was doing. It wasn't actually kit that I necessarily wanted to own. Uh, but I started going through all the sounds. Uh, so I got a uh, Yamaha TG55, TG500, Roland U220 and JV2080 I already had anyway. Uh, K1R, Kawhi K1R. I mean, these boxes are very primitive, really, especially K1R. Um, but they helped make that, that sound back then. I mean, these boxes were on so many records. U220 is like all over prodigy experience uh, a lot of other famous house and rave tunes early 90s um i could go on k1 Kawhi k1r like lfo and so many others anyway so i started going through the presets and started playing some of these kind of melodies and sounds and um found myself leaning towards making music that sounded quite throwback kind of retro uh, again, that early 90s melodic techno, early trance kind of sound. Uh, and I never thought I'd be making music like that, but I just, it led me that way. And with the hardware in the studio that I'm lucky to have, uh, I was able to get a really authentic sound and kind of uh, push that and make it bring that sound up to date, up to today, or at least I hope so, whilst keeping the old vibe. And that is something that I tend to have been able to do successfully over the years especially with shadow child uh bringing the kind of jungle sort of vibe into house music again uh and keeping an authentic sound uh i do love all that throwback stuff but i do i do love you know new production production techniques new sounds and new ways of doing things anyway so it led me on to like making these tracks i made i must have made about eight or nine across a month like really really quickly um and then uh chose actually it was going to be two eps part one and part two apollo one apollo two four tracks job done uh but then i thought i'm going to waste these other tracks make this into a bigger series what am i going to call it then all the planet names came so anyway that's where that came from but basically um the track i'm going to show you today which is called mars um the main riff in it and the, the sound that actually started this track came from an old, old project from probably, I don't know, eight, nine years ago. Uh, and where the rest of the Apollo EPs start from uh, hardware, like these boxes, like I said, uh, this one actually starts uh, with the CS80 plugin. And it's actually the old version because I've been using the new version. Um, and I'm actually, I've actually gone over to Ableton in January 2020. So these were the amongst the last tracks that I started and finished on Logic. And Logic's great. I don't think it kind of really matters. I think if you can get a great result out of your music, I've always said that. I think that's the main thing. For me, I was just looking for something fresh and it was time to, to do Ableton. Anyway, so you'll see on the screen now uh, is the CSAT. I'm going to just isolate the, the synth part that I... Um, kind of recovered from an old project because I thought it was cool there was something in it so 
So there you go. And then I, I develop it in a minute and we'll, we'll listen to that in a minute. So that was kind of what it was built around. I was looking at other tracks I had with maybe elements that were similar in and I, I, I knew about this, this riff. Um, a lot of the other elements in this track are from the hardware. My, all the drums are, I think, apart from the kick. Uh, it's been a while since I opened up this project, but let's just um, let's just have a have a listen to what we got there. Whoops, I haven't used Logic for a while, so bear with me. There you go. There's a nice ride cymbal. Uh, the kick's not in there. So there you go. Genuine 909 clap sound. I'm always harping on about this because some people do say. Oh, what's the difference, you know? And it's like, well, on the original 909, the clap each time you hit it is uh, is is different. So you can probably see there. I'm just scrolling across that these claps, each one uh, is different. So you get a real that real analog sound. And it's like if you've got that kind of hardware in the studio, that's what you've got it for. You know, if you're using samples of claps, that that will do the job. Do you know what I mean? But I wanted that authentic sound. A lot of that music I was just talking about um, was made using the real the real deal back then. So anyway, and again, fortunate enough to have that and an 808 here. So the hi-hats, 909 hats with loads of heavy EQing on. Some 828 hi-hats, these are all, all genuine ones. Uh, and a break as well because you what you had in that early 90s era even out of europe was that ravey kind of vibe in there as well uh still um so yeah that was the idea of layering in the the drum break uh what else is there the ride symbol you heard already just a second ago so let's just get take all those mutes off so we ended up with i'm gonna just come back to here and uh, the kick the kick's definitely a sample. I, I do find sometimes the 909, the real thing, it isn't like for, for hi-hats and toms and all that kind of stuff is great. The kick uh, is amazing on it, obviously. I'm not the greatest at processing it, if I'm totally honest with you. So sometimes uh, I will reach for a sample that I know I'm going to get them, like the best I can get out of. So yeah, so yeah, the 909 sounds pretty bland. If you just plug it in, uh, and listen to it, it sounds kind of pretty boring. In fact, let me just, um, uh, just mute those. So if I take, let's just go into the mixer. If I take off all this processing off these, I mean, it sounds all right. It's not too offensive actually, but uh, you can hear the amount of, um, you can hear the amount of processing that I've stuck on there. In fact, I've probably just um, unmuted too many things. Anyway, so there you go. So there's a bit heavy EQing, always rolling off the low end. Um, wow, I, I forgot about these because I haven't used Logic for a while. So anyway, uh, yeah. So again, you know, no one's really taught me the science of uh, e EQing or anything like that. I literally fumble around until I, I find what i what i need um also these uh 909 elements go through a lot of processing here they actually go through this eq as well i believe so there's a lot there's a lot going on there to kind of get that that final sound um just unmute that there you go you got a little teaser of the bass there as well so anyway uh There you go. And I'm always, put, I'm, you know, I'm guilty of pushing things too hard um, as well when I'm working. I've got I've got a limiter on the master. I've got it pumping because I want that energy. You know, when I'm writing a track, I don't want to I don't want to get to a point at the end where I'm like, oh, OK, I'm not really very inspired by what I'm doing, but it sounds all right. I want to like feel the music as, uh, as I'm working. So everyone has their own way of doing things. This is this is my way of uh of working really because um i've got a field of music so anyway there we go so that's that's your drums there is a uh just going into this first little breakdown there you go exciting right uh bass 
let's talk about bass for a minute. Now, this bass sound is probably one of the most famous bass sounds in electronic music. It came originally from DX7, DX100, either called solid bass or lately bass. It was all over this sort of music back then. And uh, I'm totally guilty of probably overusing it on my Apollo EPs, but I'm, uh, I'm, I'm fine with it. It's part of the vibe, yeah? It's like, if you're going to use 909 hats in loads of tunes, it's like, you can't really c complain at using the same bass sound. Uh, so anyway. Wow, that's got some really mad. Um, let me just, let me just try this a second. That, that that actually was a different a different bass sound that I've tried from a plugin. There you go. There's the one I used, and that. Let me take that timeless off. There you go. Everyone's heard that bass sound before. Uh, that actually is coming from the JV2080, and it's um, on the techno. The JV card, there's loads of expansion cards for it and it's on there. There's loads, there's countless places you can get that sound from. It's just that that was in the box there and that's the one that I used. So there you go. So I recorded that in, uh, which is the audio you can see right here. Uh, there you go. And it's got, it's got a uh, timeless. I still use uh, all the fab filters. I love them. I absolutely love them. There's a bit of filtering on there as well. Um, compression, no doubt, with a bit of side chain on there, yeah, which would have been coming from the kick. Yep. Uh, there you go. It's been a while, it's been nearly a year since I opened this project. Anyone out there is saying he doesn't know what he's talking about. Uh, you're right. I'm finding my way again <laughs> uh so anyway there's there's the bass sound uh let me just because it's actually going through all rooted through the mixer over here now i think there's a yeah there's a layer from omnisphere i don't know why i put that in there just maybe to go, give that kind of more like kind of mid-rangey kind of vibe maybe i was going to isolate it originally I can't actually remember if I'm, if I'm honest with you. And, oh yeah, there's your, oops, there's your CSAT again. Uh, just filter coming up on it. Such a great sound. And yes, I would love one, but no, I'm not gonna get one, a real one. Uh, anyway, there we go, so there's, To the breakdown now i remember with this i used my jupiter 8 originally for the pad i don't remember why i changed it i just I, actually i do i do i remember what it was I, I i worked on this while i was traveling as well and i hadn't recorded in the audio because what i do with all the hardware in my studio is i commit to it straight away um so um so, so it's kind of like working with remix parts almost uh, and it's a really great way to work. Anyone that's got hardware out there and spends like all day tweaking one sound on the synth and like, oh, I, I, I don't feel like I've got anywhere today. Just commit, 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 commit to everything. Record it all in. Work with the with the audio. You can always go back, you know, whatever. But I just, you know, I hadn't actually done that with the Jupiter 8 strings. And then what I did do was found, I think it's a Jupiter 8 patch on Omnisphere which is still incredible and I still love it. Oh, it's a Juno pad, there you go. Uh, so that is what you hear in this part of the track, the breakdown. Uh, let's just isolate that. Beautiful pads. Uh, and then I think some hi-hats and stuff come in. Let's just have a listen. Oh, this little, this little sound here comes from the JD800. It's one of the, it hasn't really got any drum sounds on it, JD800, but it's got weird percussive um, 
sounds uh like kind of pcm sounds built in uh to it uh that you can layer into your uh your own patches but there is i don't think there's an actual drum kit on your jd800 uh someone might tell me i'm wrong anyway but for me i remember there's some weird little sounds there's that little um sound that's in a famous genesis track as well which is pointless to be going on about unless i can play it to you anyway um so anyway that this this just again s synonymous with that kind of era I think some hi-hats and then piano. Now let's talk about pianos. Um, so this is SQ80, which is actually an ESX, um, an ESX library. Oh, here you go. See, I haven't used, I've updated Logic, but I haven't used the new... <laughs> the new sampler so this looks wicked anyways for another time for me uh anyway so i've got an esx library which is wicked uh it's really really good um i don't know where i got it from i actually bought it years and years ago and uh i gave it to adamski recently who's like one of the most famous e uh, sq80 um users of all time you know killer all his early stuff especially and he was blown away by how good it was um so yeah i feel quite fortunate to have it because i've looked for it since and i don't know where i got it from anyway so everything's sampled in there really really high quality from the whole ensonic sq80 famous famous bit kit and the famous bit of piano uh the famous piano sound which is like it's my little party trick there's more, but I won't bore you with that. Um, so yeah, there's the famous sound. So many old rave tunes, so many old uh, old uh, tracks back then and old house tunes as well. Uh, anyway, so. I remember playing it in. Normally I would go in and tidy up notes and stuff, but I remember with this, that the notes weren't, you can see they're not as long as the others. Like, I'm fine with that. Like, music's got to be real at some times. And as much as I have quantized it, I haven't quantized the note lengths as well. So if I just play that again. It's, it's almost got a little groove to it, although it's quantized perfectly, 116. It's almost got a little groove to it because of those note lengths. So don't always think to get a groove that you need uh, to put a swing on it because, you know, if you're doing something like this, or something that's kind of rhythmic, note lengths also come into, into play. Uh, so that's that. That's a real simple uh, piano line. Uh, let's have a look at the automation on that as well because I put on I put on some effects and stuff, if I remember right. Yeah and eq or oh, tape delay i do miss the tape delay from logic now i'm using ableton i do miss i do miss that if i'm honest uh space delay nothing too complex in here this is all apart from apart from the um fab filters you know it's all it's all logic do you know what i mean logic's great still for this sort of stuff just have a listen to this part There you go that's the only time you hear the piano as well i do remember trying to layer it in there again but it didn't really work let's just let's just have a listen over the track and see what it sounded like okay loads <laughs> loads of automation on there you know what i should have done this this is me being a donkey uh, logic user don't copy and now it's just gonna play Hang on. it's horrendously messy anyway there you go so I didn't go with the piano 
Oh yeah, a little layer on the strings. Let's just check this out. Sorry, jumping back to the strings because we did talk about them just now already. Uh, same pad, I think. And just rather than putting loads of effects on those really lush, uh, let's play this section. Yeah, this kind of, what's, what is it doing? I think there might be a phaser on it in the, in the plugin. Something's going on there. Lot of EQ. Yeah, chorus. So that layered, that layered with the other strings. Let's just go to it. Really nice that is. Such nice. Such nice quality strings and pads in Omnisphere. Let's just listen to that section all in together. it's such a simple tune if you look at it like this right that's just drums so you could say one two three four five six seven eight that's my drum track there's some strings all right there's two but they're laid together a piano a bass and a synth you know it's you don't have to I've, you know i've got projects too that have got like 50 60 70 80 100 tracks uh but it just ends up being a minefield i think being really decisive with your sounds committing to things early as i said earlier uh having a bit of a vision uh on the on the spectrum so thinking of uh i've, I've said this one before too but i still do it it's really important is think about where your sound fits on a spectrum on a spectrum analyzer uh or on an eq you know uh, think about where your sounds are going to sit give things space let things breathe i mean it it sounds like there's loads going on in there but sonically there kind of is but i mean actually there's not a lot of instruments there's not a lot of parts it's 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 kind of quite simple really um so yeah let's just have a listen to the outro everyone loves an outro MIDI parts hanging around that I haven't deleted. It's quite, it looks quite unt untidy this project for one of mine. Anyway, you kind of get what's going on. Uh, I think one thing we didn't talk about was the main, the drum bus, because I use, this is a free plugin. Let's just talk about the drums a little bit more uh, for those still watching. I'll see ya. Uh, I mean, this is so, there's so many good plugins out there to glue stuff together. Uh, I interestingly, I took the saturation off. This is one of my favorite, favorite things. I still use these. Well, both of these I use now on all my drum uh, tracks. This for saturation and everything about it. I just love it. And it was on a deal. I don't know if it is now, but it was on a crazy 90% off deal. So keep an eye on Waves because they, they, they do these crazy deals. This is an Abbey Road uh, J37. Uh, that I turned off for some reason. But anyway, uh, that is one that I love and I use all the time. Uh, Frontier is free. It's from D16. They make the best... Sorry, Roland. They make the best 909 emulation, D16. Uh, it's so close to the original. Like the Roland, the Roland Cloud ones are really, really great, to be honest. But... The, the drummers on it's called night if you want like 909 that's like as close as you can get that it's it's so so good um anyway so this company uh and i and i use them for bit crusher as well some people out there will know about these guys already but if you don't uh d16 
Polish company, uh, Decimort. So, so good. Uh, Bit Crusher and Antrosol as well, which is a phaser and a flanger. And they're just really kind of simple. I don't know. I like, I like, I like simple, easy things. I like to get a result nice and quick, keep the vibe going, you know. It's the worst thing when you lose a vibe in studio. I to go and get a sandwich or something. Oh, by the way, while I'm rabbiting on, this is my temporary setup. So if you hear cars going by, it is because the studio is in my house at the moment. Uh, we've been doing a big renovation project. So, uh, yeah, excuse any external uh, noise uh, of cars going by and stuff. Uh, anyway, so that's on the drums. A bit of EQ. Again, I'm always breaking rules. So I'm EQing drums I've already EQ'd and whatever. But so what? There we go. That's how I, that's how I do my thing. Um, and just going to look now on the output on the master. So this is what I don't really use that, to be honest. I don't know what this analyzer is. Uh, oh, everything's busting out of there. Sorry, it's just where the way my new setup is. Um, so I do work with this. This is part of UAD, and I do work with this on um, Precision Maximizer. Anyone that's seen any videos with me before, I'm always banging on about this, but it's still one of my go-tos. Uh, it just brings the vibe. Um, stick your free bands on, turn the shape up. Use a bit of limiter if you want to on there as well. Obviously, you've got to take the limiter off when you're doing your pre-master and all that kind of stuff. But love it. It's just just amazing. And uh, this is a plugin that I haven't used for a while um, that I stuck on this track and then um, took it away. This this is free, or it was free. VHS goes inside Reactor, as you can see. And it uh, I'll give you a little blast of it, actually. I can't, actually, because... <laughs> Let me stick it on uh stick it on the drum bus. Then then I can. Uh let's just move that over there. Crazy plugin. Literally makes your music sound like it is coming from VHS tape. Um puts in all those horrible imperfections for those of you that remember that. And uh there we go. Right, let's just see. Yeah, some of it's quite harsh and, and horrible. There's all these nice hums and hisses uh i was obviously trying to although back then i was making this kind of nice clean sound which is a bit different for me uh there you go all these kind of crackles and things um i was obviously trying to dirty it up a little bit so if you want to do stuff like that you can anyway i don't i don't want to do that on this track obviously uh i don't remember that right okay so that's kind of how I, that's kind of how i work and for me this track it did all the apollo tracks came together really 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 quickly it's all about the sound sources sometimes it's like if you get a new plugin i had it recently with um the slate nash plugins and i've just written stacks of material off because the plugin really i was kind of really excited by the plugin and found it really inspiring straight away so i've just written so many like tracks off the back of it sometimes you just need one thing to really set the set the spark going for you uh and just roll with it don't don't think about it too much roll with it commit to things um you know uh there you go one other thing i'm going to talk to you about quickly before we finish up is how i work these days everyone everyone every label we all require a streaming edit it's the new the new radio edit isn't it so this is how i do it i copy the whole track over on the same on the same uh, project file and then i go about deleting and arranging here i'm not going to do that now because you understand what i'm talking about uh so i might decide to bring the track in whoops i might decide to bring the track in Probably from there, so all that would go. Then I would arrange this. You you get where I'm coming from. The reason I do that is because if I have to go back in and make a change, if the mastering engineer comes back and says, "Oh, your hi hats, they're just too like, you know, it's not going to cut very well to vinyl because these will cut to vinyl." I've got to go back into both projects, change both, save a preset on a plugin and blah blah. I mean, it's not too much of a of a ball ache, but uh, if you do it this way. 
you can quickly go back in, change it on one channel. Uh, so say it was the hi hats. I can just go into here and say, right, he said it was too toppy. So let's just bring that down a bit. Blah, blah, blah. It's done it across both versions straight away for you and you just bounce what you want. It's just one of those things that some people will work like that already. So you're going to go, yeah, tell me something new. Uh, but a lot of people that I have spoke to about this way of working um, when it comes to the, that end point where you need to uh, bounce your pre-masters, um, this is a good way to do it because there are instances and we've all had it where you have to go back in and then change two, sometimes three different versions. So for continuity, it's just a good way to, to kind of to kind of do that. Uh, so there you go. That is my track, Mars, um, part of the Apollo series. This one's on Apollo 2. Um, I did make this a long time ago, just as a little reminder. Uh, made it in Logic. I don't use Logic anymore. Um, and uh, I mean, I, I like Logic. Um, so, but me fumbling around this now is because I haven't used Logic for a little while. Uh, but here's some other little highlights of things that are regulars for me um, still. Uh, love this. This is part of UAD. It's such great reverb. It's one of the ones that the Beatles famously used in Abbey Road. Uh, and I still use this as well all the time. Oxide tape is also good. Um, it's on the 909 uh, group before it goes to the drum bus there. Uh, so there's that as well. Also, my auto load is a bit cranky. This, if I go, I don't know what I'm going to find. So, I'm going to press that and unhide all the tracks. So, yeah, the auto load is uh, uh, my old auto load from a year ago is there still. So, there's a lot of uh, stray tracks and things that could be taken away. It is nice. Whoops. It is nice when you get to the end of a, a project to kind of have a little, have a little tidy up. It kind of feels feels good it feels like oh, i'm at the end of it and even though you might not uh come back to the track um again or whatever unless future music asks you to do a video about it um you know you might never open it again anyway there we go that's a little bit tidier isn't it so there you go i hope that was helpful to you i'm hoping um that uh, you're going to go and, and at least stream the track, if not buy the beautiful white 10 inch vinyl uh, that we made, which is part of a set. There's four parts to Apollo now as well, not two or three as it was. Uh, now four parts. Whoops. And I'm really chuffed with it. It's very different for me. It's, it's kind of feels really nice and convenient that it's happened whilst we've been in this awful pandemic, which I don't wish that on anybody, obviously, but as far as uh, having downtime, doing something new, doing something different, releasing music that's new and a different sound. It feels like it's a good, it's been a good time for me to do that. Although I made the music last year. Um, so yeah, I hope people enjoy it. Um, if there's any other questions and stuff, you can always message me as well. But Big Up Future Music, thank you for asking me to do this. And uh, I'm always on board with you, with you guys. And, uh, and yeah, I hope everyone's good and uh, stay safe.